Sharam strolled across the portico that extended from the back side of his manse. He rested an arm on the balustrade and looked out over the moonlit lake. It was an idyllic vista, with palm trees leaning over the shore and a boat dock nearby. Yet the beautiful exterior hid an ugly secret underneath the surface. It will fade from my mind in time. The nobleman took a draw from his wine goblet. He would be sure to have another after this one. A distant detail caught his eye. Were those footprints leading from the water? Sharam went to the side of the terrace, where the steps descended to the courtyard. Ramin, he called down. Come here. No reply came. Ramin, are you there? The guardsman did not answer. He must be making a round. Sharam went back to the house and poked his head inside the beaded archway. The room within was a study decorated with papyrus scrolls and gladiatorial relics from the House of Strength. Gray-bearded Drouch sat at a table with abacus and ink quill, busy scribing sums from the day's arena spectacle. Have you seen Ramin? No, master. Drouch did not pause his quill or look up. Sharam drained his cup and set it down. He returned to the top of the portico stairs. Ramin, are you there? Nothing. He went down the steps into the courtyard. A cool breeze swayed the leaves of the various well-tended plants and carried aromas of night blooms. The wind also brought a creaking sound. The gate door that led through the high courtyard wall was unlocked, swaying half open. Back to the study entrance went the nobleman. Drausch, I want you to ready my carriage. At this hour, is something wrong, master? I will explain in a moment. Summon Farik and wait for me in the carriage house. Is this so urgent? You know I hate to interrupt the Count. The graying scribe glanced up at the master. I'm not quite certain. Sharam fidgeted with one of the rings on his pudgy fingers. But, uh, yes, I want my carriage ready immediately. As you say, Drouch stood, frowning. Sharam took a Zephos from its wall display and headed outside once again. He went across the portico, down the stairway, and through the creaking door. He squinted against the dim. This door should be locked shut. I will peel Ramin's hide. On quiet steps, Sharam exited the courtyard. Curiosity brought him along the side grounds and down to the shore. Wind swept over the gentle waves of Tagir Lake. There in the sand was a set of footprints coming out of the water and leading toward the manse. Boot prints. Impossible, muttered Sharam. But oh, how the mind makes many an impossible thing dance upon its stage. The man took a step back, then another. The sight of the lake made him feel ill. Just a few weeks prior, he and Ramin had dumped a body into the depths of these very waters. His name had been Naraman, only a common soldier in Doreo, nothing more. Well, his wife Sarea was something more. She was the most succulent fruit Sharam had ever tasted, and he would taste her many times more. Her period of mourning will soon end. She will return to her service here. She should be honored that a noble has shown her such affection. He kicked sand at the footprints and turned back. When he neared the gate, he stopped. Someone moved on the other side. Ramin? The guardsman pushed open the gate door. Ramin, where have you been? I have called for you many times. The man gave no answer. He stepped forward in a strange, shuffling manner. When he emerged from the shadows, the pale moonlight revealed the horrifying truth. A sodden face chewed down to nearly skeletal. He wore Ramin's lamellar and carried his kopesh, its blade coated crimson. 
with his every step, his boots made a wet, squishing sound. No! shrieked the nobleman. The revenant swung the bloody blade. Sharam evaded the slash and grabbed hold of the attacker's arm. We killed you! What dark magic is this? The offhand of the undead shot out and grasped Sharam's neck. Naraman quit the kopesh to add in his main hand to the grip. His fingers were cold and sopping, yet deathly strong. Die! He gurgled. The nobleman worked the tip of his zephos between the lamellar scales and plunged the blade into the body of the revenant. The ghastly thing flinched, and Sharam broke free. He ran around the side of the manse, heart pounding in his chest. The gates of the carriage house were open. Drouch and Farik had just harnessed a horse. We must go! What is the matter? The scribe's eyes went wide. Go! Go! shouted the master. Go now! The men leapt into the carriage and whipped the horse into action. Wooden wheels tore across the gravel. There came a loud whack. The curved blade of the blood-soaked kopesh chopped through the side of the coach, a mere inch away from Sharam's head. The nobleman escaped into the night, throat aching and bowels churning, but alive. No relief came. No rest. He is out there somewhere, and he will come for me again. <laughs>